welcome to this update video. I hope you're doing great this morning. Happy Easter to all the celebrants out there. Now, we are 62 days out from the official start of the hurricane season, which is June 1st, and I'll be going into some updates. So, AccuWeather's prediction is out for how many named storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes they're expecting. And I also want to take a look at the, uh, the different variables that will eventually impact the hurricane season. And also, it looks as though we could definitely see more action in the Caribbean this year, especially compared to last year, where many systems stayed offshore. So I'm going to get straight into what you should know. But as of right now, looking at the satellite imagery, there are a few systems loitering around some thunderstorms in parts of South America. But for the Caribbean region, uh, we can definitely see that there's some cloud patches here and there, maybe with some scattered showers. But for the most part, nothing much is really happening right now. And that front that's uh, located within the vicinity of the region is weakening, but there could still be some additional showers as we head through today. And that is definitely seen on the Euro's precipitation forecast as we're going to be heading through today. So the different colors here indicate how much rainfall is expected. The more colorful this map becomes, more rainfall anticipated and we can see that parts of northern south america are colorful sections of colombia venezuela guyana Suriname, french guiana so there could even be some substantial rain in some of these areas and uh, with that there could even be some instances of flooding trinidad tobago there may also be a few showers passing by some areas maybe not for everywhere and also uh, throughout the rest of the lesser antilles Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, parts of Hispaniola, Jamaica, going toward the uh, coast of Central America, parts of eastern Honduras, Nicaragua, maybe even Belize, may experience some uh, shower activity as we're going to be heading through today. Not at all guaranteed. And uh, even for Jamaica, yesterday there were some showers across some parishes, not everywhere, just as I said, because it wasn't a strong frontal system moving through with a lot of precipitation to uh, especially help out with the drought that some areas are currently experiencing. So it wasn't a substantial system. As we take a look to Cuba, the Cayman Islands, most of the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, Florida Peninsula, and most of the other Central American territories, Mexico through uh, parts of Panama, much rain is not expected at all. So it's likely to be a pretty dry Sunday. Same story for the ABC Islands out there. Looking at the wind forecast, winds definitely kicking up in the Caribbean coming in from the northeast and uh, the east and northeast, that is. So uh, some of these wind gusts could be well up to 20, 25 miles per hour, even stronger in some areas. So winds are definitely going to be kicking up, especially in the central Caribbean. Now, I will be showing you guys the forecast from AccuWeather, but first we want to take a look at the different variables that impact the activity we see during the hurricane season. First up, we have the sea surface temperature anomaly map right here. So how this works is that the warmer colors, the yellows, oranges, reds indicate above average temperatures. Whites mean that the temperature is pretty much normal and the blues indicate below normal temperatures. Now we can definitely see that the Atlantic basin is very, very warm. The Caribbean out in the main development region but looking over to the pacific of course there's some areas that are above average especially offshore uh, southern central america over there but as we take a look at the pacific we can definitely see that there are some cooler temperatures there especially offshore ecuador now this is the enso region and when there is cooling happening we are basically heading to la nina phase as expected since earlier this year so La Nina is returning for this summer for the hurricane season and it is going to be uh, helping to exacerbate the effects that we could see in the Atlantic because it usually helps to result in less wind shear and wind shear is an enemy to tropical cyclones. So when there is more favorable upper level winds and other conditions are conducive, no doubt that we will be seeing a lot of development happening and that is why La Nina seasons are usually very active. So as I mentioned, it is very warm in the Atlantic Basin. And this is a look at the actual graphic. We can see that right here uh, in the Caribbean up to 29 degrees Celsius within some spots. So it is getting very warm. At the minimum, tropical cyclones will require around 26 degrees Celsius. And this isn't the only factor. 
because we're still in the dry season. There is more atmospheric stability and it is instability that helps to get those thunderstorms going because uh, there is more rise in air motion for that warm, moist air to rise, cool, condensed to form clouds. And that's how we get those uh, thunderstorms really going. So if there isn't as much instability, then it's exactly that we won't see much, which is what's happening right now with the dry season. As we look at this map right here, we can see all these colors. The uh, yellows, oranges, reds indicate the dry air. The Caribbean, very dry. Same story as surrounding areas. So it's definitely not conducive right now to favor development. But eventually, we're going to be seeing less and less of this. And yes, there will be some plumes of Saharan dust coming off that will bring with it uh, more dry, stable conditions. But generally, as we head towards uh, May and through the hurricane season, there isn't as much uh, dry environmental conditions. And another thing that accompanies a La Nina is a more dominant area of high pressure. Now, these high pressure areas, the Bermuda Azores High, usually help to dictate the track of tropical cyclones, especially those that form from tropical waves coming off of Africa. So, winds within a high pressure system rotate in a clockwise fashion and that is how we get those systems move into the west because they travel along the periphery of it now a stronger high pressure system will result in a more westward track of those potential tropical cyclones or those tropical waves meanwhile a weaker area of high pressure will allow a lot of the tropical cyclones that develop to curve up and out to sea which we saw a lot last year last year was an el nino hurricane season but with La Nina, it is likely that we will see a more dominant area of high pressure and that is reflected on the precipitation anomaly forecast by various climate models. So let's take a look at a few of them. And we are starting out with the CANSEPS model. So as we head to May, June, July, we're definitely seeing that above average rain for the Caribbean or precipitation rather. And that is indicated by those green shadings. The yellow indicates below average precipitation. July, August, September, same story here. We see the Caribbean, uh, parts of the U.S. East Coast, Bahamas, Gulf Coast, even sections of Central America within that green shade. And so above average activity for these areas, September, October, November, it's a similar story that we see. And then as we head on to the climate forecast system, May, June, July, above average precipitation for most of the Caribbean region. We see the same thing as we head into July, August, September. And then uh, September, October, November, we see much of the Caribbean again being in that green shade and indicating that, hey, we could see more activity here. And MME remains consistent with those other uh, previous models. And so we can see May, June, July, July, August, September, September, October, November. So all of these models are definitely suggesting that more dominant area of high pressure out there. Finally, looking at the AccuWeather's prediction for this hurricane season. So they're expecting 20 to 25 named storms, of which 8 to 12 could become hurricanes and 4 to 7 major hurricanes. That is a lot. Even the lower end of those values, 20 storms, 8 hurricanes, 4 major hurricanes, that's still very concerning, provided we're headed into, uh, we're heading into a La Nina hurricane season. Based on their prediction, we could see the total number of storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes fall in somewhere within these ranges. And the only two hurricane seasons to produce seven major hurricanes, which is basically a hurricane of Cat 3, 4, or 5, were 2005 and 2020. Both of those were La Nina seasons, and 2005 was a crazy one. It produced several Category 5 hurricanes, and 2020 was also very active, currently the most active season in recorded history. And there were quite a number of storms which affected the Caribbean. So we may see something similar this year. Not saying it will, in fact, be uh, somewhat of an exact replica of those seasons, but it is likely that we will see. Now, with that said, it doesn't mean that you will get hit this year. I'm not at all saying that. But if you're in the areas typically affected, the Caribbean, Bahamas, U.S. Gulf and East Coast, Central America, it is good to be prepared because the area is prone to impacts on an annual basis. And it doesn't even have to be multiple systems. It can be just one, just one system, just one hurricane. That is an absolute nightmare to be remembered. And we don't want that, of course. And I'm not saying it will happen, but I'm just saying it only takes 
won. So it doesn't mean that you will get hit this year, and it doesn't mean there will be a major hurricane in the Caribbean this year either. But based on the forecast, we're likely to see more activity in the region. And uh, of course, I've been seeing what persons have been saying online about how forecasters say the same thing every year. Well, the previous years have in fact been very active. Last year was an active season. 2022 was also active. 2021 was very active. I believe the third most active season in history. 2020, as I said earlier, the most active season in recorded history. 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016, going all those years back have been very active. So yes, that's just how it's been. So again, we're likely to see more activity this hurricane season the average number of storms is about 14 storms seven hurricanes three majors we're likely to see more than uh, those number of storms and so guys my channel is here to keep you posted at all times as i've done last year i posted every day through the hurricane season keeping you abreast with what is happening i'll be doing the same not just for the hurricane season this year but i've been doing that since the start of the year and i'm trying to maintain that stamina to keep you guys posted every single day unless of course something comes up where i can't do so then i may not but i'll let you guys know regardless i'll still post in the community section of my channel to let you know what's going on but that is basically it for this video if you have any questions please do leave them in the comments i'll respond when i can and remember to always be weatherwise